If you struggle with sewing sleeves, try this game-changing hack. Every single time I posted this on social media, the post would go viral. This is the easiest, the quickest, and the cleanest way to sew a satin sleeve, and it's called crimping. First, let's establish the context. What's the problem? You have your armhole ready, and then you have your sleeve ready. And now you try to connect your sleeve to the armhole, and you realize that the sleeve curve is longer than the armhole curve, and you start panicking. You might think that you made a mistake because surely the sleeve should fit the armhole. And then many beginners make two common mistakes. One, they fold the sleeve like this to create a pleat to make sure that it fits, or they make the curve shorter. Now, these two options are indeed the wrong way. Your sleeve curve needs to be a little bit longer than your armhole. It's called the ease and it's needed when you're working with woven non-stretchy fabrics. If your sleeve doesn't have any ease, it will be very uncomfortable for you to move your arm. So by having one, one and a half centimeters extra along the curve of the sleeve, you have a garment that allows you to move your arms. There are different techniques that result in the same outcome. So the idea is that you want to take the crown of your sleeve and to kind of gather it a little bit one way or another, either with the tiny hand stitches or using the sewing machine on the lower tension. So you put the thread on the top and you pull it, so you gather it like the curtains, and then it's easier to connect it to the armhole. But I want to show you the crimping technique, which in my opinion is the quickest, the easiest and creates the most even result. So let's go to the sewing machine. Very quickly, let me introduce myself. My name is Lisa Bennett. I am co-founder of Studio Arc de Faux, designer and educator. My biggest passion and mission in life is helping women feeling great in their bodies with clothes that fit just right. Instead of selling you ready patterns that usually don't fit anyway, I teach you how to understand clothes making inside out. And I'm a strong believer that the right sewing technique is the one that works for you. Before you start with an actual garment, I always recommend to make some tests. So just get a strip of fabric to get familiar with the technique. You put your fabric under the presser foot and now you place your finger behind the presser foot and you keep it there. Don't worry, it's completely safe. You're behind the presser foot and now you start sewing and you don't allow the fabric to move past your finger. You keep it there so you're jamming the fabric towards the presser foot. You don't allow it to spread and that's what you're getting. It's perfectly even gathers. And don't worry, all of this won't be visible once you touch the sleeve. Now, the important part here is do not open it up. If I open it up, it basically brings fabric back to where it should be and there is no use for me. You don't want to open the folds. Now, let's move to the sleeve. First thing I'm going to do, I will just connect the underarm part of the sleeve and also to make sure that you align your side seam of the garment with side seam of the sleeve. You just start there, make sure that they match. You can start from the side seam and stitch a little bit over here, underarm on one side, and then on the other side. And we don't do crimping on the underarm, it's not needed. Here's what I have. The underarm of the sleeve is stitched, side seams are aligned, and now I have my curve exposed and I can go ahead and do the crimping. And you want to position it within the seam allowance because then this will be my main stitch connecting the sleeve, right? So the crimping needs to sit somewhere here. Okay, finger behind, and you prevent your fabric from moving. That's what I'm getting and that's exactly what I want. Now let's pin it. I'm finding the top point of my sleeve and connecting it with the shoulder. Remember, do not stretch these little folds very carefully. You only start a little bit stretching them once you find a nice position on your armhole. One side done, now the other. There we go, perfect. A common question if the sleeve will start looking like it's a puffy sleeve. No, for a puffy sleeve you need a lot more fabric. This will be invisible. Now I can go to the machine and continue my original stitch. So that's what I've got. It looks a little bit gathered now. It's totally normal. I'll go to the iron and it will be invisible. And you can just grab a piece of fabric or a towel, 
road like this to help you iron the sleeve. And here you have it. This trick works every single time. And if there are minor imperfections, you can always unpick the stitch and correct it. And for practice purposes, you don't have to make a shirt. You can test it on a small piece like this. Look, I don't even have the full back or the front. It's basically just the side seam and part of the shoulder and a very short sleeve just for the practice. When you want to learn something new, a new technique or try to work on something in particular, you don't have to make an entire garment. Make the part of the garment that you want to practice. And there are other uses for the crimping technique. For example, you're working on a dress and you're really excited. So you try it on and in the process, you stretch the neckline a little bit. And now you try to connect the facing or the collar and the neck is too stretched. Go to the sewing machine and try crimping. It will bring the neck back to its original shape and it'll be really easy to connect it to whatever you're connecting it to. Or maybe you're working on a shirt that has a curvy hemline. You can also use crimping to help the edge fold inside. Maybe you're working on a patch pocket that has curvy edges. Again, how do you fold those curves in? Try the crimping method. And a very common question we get asked, does it work with the domestic sewing machine? And the answer is yes, of course. There is no big difference in functionality between a domestic and an industrial machine. Your machine doesn't do the crimping. There is no special program for it. You physically, with your finger, are not allowing the fabric to move further. So you are creating the crimping effect. And the second popular question is what size of stitching should you use? I can tell you that when I'm working on something and I'm using the crimping technique, I don't change the size of my stitch. So whatever I was using, I just continue using for crimping and it works every single time. But if you want to test what's the difference between a shorter stitch and a longer stitch for crimping, then the best thing to do is to make tests. You can't truly learn something new by watching this video or reading a book. You have to go over there to your machine and get your hands dirty and try things out. So if you have any unfinished shirts or blouses because you're afraid to finish the sleeve, then try this technique and let me know how it goes. And remember, there are many different ways to arrive to the same result. And the best way to figure out what technique works best for you is to try it. The more you practice and the more different techniques you try, the sooner you establish your own unique routine. Clothes making is not about black and white rules, but it's about your creativity. And if you found this content helpful, please like this video and subscribe to our channel.